once upon a time, I decided that our remake should be about Cinderella. But not Disney. So folks, we are not going to be looking at any of the three versions Disney has put out of Cinderella. If you don't know the story, I'm sorry, you're gonna have to Google it yourself. Clearly you've been hiding under a rock and don't know this beloved fairy tale. And the film industry lived happily ever after. What, what were they thinking? Okay, we're all cinderella up and ready to talk about the four adaptations we watched. Thankfully, Anne has created some lovely visuals to help us all out. You're welcome. Yeah, I know, thank you. So, our first feature was 1955's The Glass Slipper, where Cinderella was referred to as Ella, except the townspeople would call her Cinderella, Cinderella. because she was always dirty. And who was the actress? Leslie Caron. She loves saying that in French. I love saying that. The next picture is the TV movie of Cinderella, mm -hmm. featuring the music of Rodgers and Hammerstein, and this was produced in 1965 with Leslie Ann Warren. Next, we are featuring the 1976 movie called The Slipper and the Rose. It featured music by the Sherman Brothers, and this actress is Gemma Craven. And she was referred to as Cinderella. She was referred to as Cinderella, yes. Our final version is the 1998 Ever After, featuring Drew Barrymore, but Cinderella is actually called Danielle de Barbarac. I think we should talk about the different character types of Cinderella. All right, let's start with the most basic one. She was a sappy dreamer. Mm. And we learned this right away in her first song when she sang, I'm as mild and as meek as a mouse when I hear a command I obey she also says I like sitting in my corner so look at how basic she is and she had like two different looks it was and so and, deer in the headlights and she was also close to tears a lot Ugh. Ugh. next up oh my gosh my favorite from the glass slipper, Ella. Ella. She was dirty. Mm -hmm. She was always dirty. And people were picking on her. Not her Stop picking on me! What is that? It's a second puppet. Don't worry about oh. it. But the townspeople picked on her. You didn't see much picking on or ridicule. I want her. to die! She says that three she times. She did say that. She was not happy. She never actually cleaned. No, we didn't see her doing Ever. any housework. She did help her, her stepsisters get ready for the ball, but she was very rebellious and very angry and full yeah. of self loathing. Yes. Oh. She was so unmemorable. But look at you. But she never hair. she never complained about the fact that she had to cook and clean and everything. But probably because it was done by magic, okay? But, I wouldn't complain I mean, if my work was done we'll by magic. We'll talk about the magic later on, but honestly, but still, mm -hmm. it wasn't memorable. Yeah. She wasn't memorable. Not really. Mm -mm. She's very pretty, but not memorable. <gasps> what about this one? All right. So Danielle is my personal favorite because she is a staunch feminist. And she didn't actually need the prince to save herself. She... No, she actually rescued herself. She rescued mm -hmm. the prince. She was very well read. She read Utopia. She just was outspoken and a badass. And she was a hard worker and she put up with whatever was thrown Always at her. Always dirty. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We liked her. Let's talk about the different personalities for the princess next. Very good. Okay. So let's start actually with the slipper and the rose. So here our prince is named Edward, and he constantly talks about the fact that he feels trapped by everything he has to do. In his birthright. In his birthrights. And he hates the idea of throwing a ball. He's very arrogant. He's very basic. Very basic. I, he's very unmemorable, so let's just... So Okay. Let's move on. Ever After's prince is Prince Henry. Now, Prince Henry is also... Arrogant. Okay. But he... Um, Immature. Yes, it, that as well. He also is supposed to be married to a Spanish princess. He was sulking about that. So his father says, fine, if you want love, then I'm going to throw you a ball. Five days. Got to find someone in five days. All right. Okay. 
Ella's Ella. prince. So Ella's prince is Prince Charles. He is actually very much interested in Cinderella. He's, he was kind of sweet. He sees her in the woods when she's having her stupid meltdown. Hey, everyone hates me. May I? Mm -hmm. He was entranced by her sad, rebellious eyes. Allegedly. That's what he said. All right. But he, I looked at him as like a father figure because he wanted to teach her how to dance and he was very tender towards her and he listened to her. So I see it as kind of a father figure. So I'm not sure about that. A little bit that. creepy. Yeah. And then finally, let's talk about the toxic male Sappy. slave dragons before coming back. He they did say that, dragons. He doesn't have a name. They refer to him as the, the prince. prince. No name. Also, red flag. He calls Cinderella the wench. Oops. Why would a fellow want a girl like her, a frail and frothy beauty? Why can a fellow ever once prefer a usual girl like me? You know what we're going to talk about. It's time to talk about the stepsisters. So let's start with Ella's. Ella's. They were beautiful mm. and they were spoiled. And Ella would constantly try to fight with them and then run away into the forest and say, I'm going to kill myself. Hmm. What about the slipper and the rose? They were very argumentative. They were beautiful as well, but they were nasty and they would, were competing to win the prince. I don't remember them. So. And they were bossy. Ah, uh, yes, they were. <gasps> Next. Oh my goodness. So Danielle's stepsisters, we have Jacqueline and Marguerite. And Marguerite was a stone cold bitch. She would <laughs> scream and she was yell. nasty. Horrid. She? Horrid. Horrid. She burned her book. Oh. And Jacqueline was decent. She kind of went along with everything. But then realized that mm -hmm. there was favoritism. Oh, yeah. Favoritism. And this one. They were homely. I mean, we were made to think they were homely because no, they, were they, homely. Had, they had odd characteristics. One had creaky knees, the other would pat her eyelashes. The and actresses were like twice their age. Yeah. What's the matter with the men? What's the matter with the men? Let's talk about the stepmother. <laughs> she was the mother of the prettiest girls in the village, didn't you know? Don't you know that? And Cousin Lulu, it was important to, she got money from Cousin Lulu to keep them in beautiful dresses. I actually adored how the movie started with the slipper and the rose because we see Cinderella and her stepmother and stepsisters coming back from Cinderella's father's funeral. That's a lot to say. Mm-hmm. And the stepmother, she goes, oh, that room is now mine, and all of your clothes are mine, and Cinderella, you are banished downstairs, and no, you must cook kitchen. and clean and everything. She's know the your position, she said. Only stepmother to do this. Mm hmm Moving on. <laughs> she was like, she was vain. Not scary. No, she was very vain. She had this little mirror that she carried around, and she'd look at herself, and she'd make a face at her. But it was very cartoony. It was very fake. And it she was... not only bossed Cinderella around, but she bossed her own daughters around. So <laughs> she didn't read the story. I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> Finally. Angelica Houston. My God. Stone Cold Great Bitch. Actress. I really? mean, her looks alone, you're just like, ooh, I don't want to, you know, mess with her type of thing. Um, she was an opportunist, though. She wanted Marguerite in the castle, the end. She was going to make sure that Marguerite was to marry the prince. So she had favoritism towards her own daughter. Oh, absolutely. She even said to Jacqueline that she was going to be cleaning this chimney with Cinderella if she wasn't going to listen or whatever. Not Cinderella, but Danielle. And she was, I think, more mean because she was quiet and mean. Well, her looks alone. I mean, it's... Yeah. Amazing. Abusive. Mm. She was abusive. Mm -hmm. Very good. The prince is giving a ball! We're going to the ball! Which means we need to talk about the fairy godmother! Yes. Here we go! The fairy godmother for this one was your basic, everyday, magical type. She looked like Linda, and she could not sing. 
the slipper and the rose. She was a writer of all things. Yeah. And she used borrowed magic and she gave Cinderella a dog to help with the chores. She also complained about the fact that she had to help other fairy tales, which was unnecessary. The we had Mrs. 2K. Mm -hmm. She was a darling older lady that liked words and was a kleptomaniac. Every where she went. She would take candlesticks, she would take random things, but this dress she took from Cousin Lulu. And finally, in Ever After, we didn't have a fairy godmother. Mm -mm. We had Leonardo da Vinci. What were they thinking? Um, I'm fine with it. So um, Danielle befriends him in the very beginning of the story through the prince. And um, when she reveals that she is not Nicole de Lancre, instead she is Danielle de Barbarac, um, he basically says, well, who cares? I'm the bastard of a son of a peasant. Best line. And Best line ever. He goes, what does that have to do? And then basically he gives her wings and he coaches her through his words. Mm -hmm. It's very lovely. Very wise. So we would like to talk about the two subplots that two of our four adaptations contained. So our first one comes from The Slipper and the Rose. Yes, yeah, Cinderella and the prince fall in love at the ball. They're going to get married. His father says, no, she's a commoner. No can do. So she's banished, yeah, sadly. And the fairy godmother comes to her where she's banished, and she goes, what are you doing here? You're supposed to be getting married. And she says, it's not my wedding. She goes, come on. Yes, it is. So they go back. There's a wedding. Magic. Everything is fine. The end. Happily ever after. Took about a half an hour to establish all that. Absolutely. In Ever After, we have an additional character by the name of Monsieur Le Pew. And the stepmother is selling all of the family's farm possessions to him. But not only that, she doesn't want the prince to see her ever again. So she sells Danielle to Le Pew. The nasty, nasty man. As a slave. Mm. But thankfully, Danielle, she's an independent woman. And she frees she herself. frees herself. How about that? I want to talk about the music. Absolutely. So two of our four adaptations are actually musical. So take it away, Anne. Well, this one, Roger's name is Cinderella, is near and dear to my heart. Because when it came out, it was the weekend for all county chorus. And there was a huge blizzard and about a handful, I think 10 kids had to stay at our house. And I felt very special that I could stay up and watch it with those big kids. Now, for those of you who don't know, this is a record. So there's two sides to it. And to listen to it, you need a record player and a needle. And you play one side and turn it over. And you don't dance around because you might skip it. All right, so, so then our second adaptation that's a musical is The Slipper and the Rose. And and who wrote the music to that? The Sherman Brothers. And, and they're known for... They're known for Mary Poppins and Chitty Chitty Bang Bang. Mem memorable, beautiful songs, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But let's hear some titles on this one. Once I Was Love. Okay. What a Comforting Thing to Know. Protocotically Correct. Then we have He Danced With Me. Tell Him Anything. And how about this one? Position and positioning. I would just like to point out the fact that none of these songs were memorable. None of them were lyrical or there was a melody to them. I believe that this was a passion project because the Sherman brothers not only wrote the screenplay, they also were executive producers for the production. And they basically said, hey, we have all these leftover songs from Mary Poppins and Chitty Chitty Bang Bang. Let's Turn it into a Cinderella story. And lush story, bland music. Bland story, lush music. One more fun fact. The song, The Loneliness of Evening, Rodgers and Hammerstein wanted to use that in South Pacific, didn't have a place for it. So 49 minutes of music, 49 minutes of music. The picture was an hour and 17 minutes long. How long was this one, Carrie? Two and a half hours. Enough said. Time to give our award to the best of. Huzzah! Yes. Let's start with the best fairy godmother. I enjoyed Mrs. Tuke. Even though she's a clapto? It made her a beautiful princess. All right. I actually enjoyed having Leonardo da Vinci as Danielle's 
fairy godfather. Mm, he was very sweet. So stepmother, hands down. I mean, come on, Angelica, Angelica Houston. Houston, stone cold bitch. Yep. Cinderella. That's a toss up. Mm -hmm. That's a toss up because okay. I really liked this character, Danielle, and. I also enjoyed Leslie Caron. So I like both of them as well. I feel that Ella and Danielle are the ideal Cinderella's. She had a bad situation and she expressed how she felt. The other ones, they didn't. They kind of crimped it down. Both of them know? were like that. But yeah. this one, she was always saying how she felt. She was always saying what she wanted to accomplish. As did this one. I'm going to live in the palace. I'm going to have a better life. So the they're our favorites. So that brings us to the gown. Mm, this one's my favorite. I have to agree with that. However, I will say I did enjoy Cinderella's gown in Beautiful. the slipper and the rose. So it's a combination for me. I would a wear both boat, of these dresses. A little bow. Mm -hmm. But the one thing that I enjoyed in the, the glass slipper, all of the gowns that were made gorgeous, beautiful detail. I give this movie best costuming award. All right. Finally, Anne... Out of all four versions, which one's your favorite? Oh, they're all really, really good. I loved, 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 loved overall the music in this one, okay? okay. Music was the best. Costume and ballet, best. Really great contemporary story. But I, it's kind of a toss-up for me. So for me, I would say if I was to show a contemporary version of Cinderella, I would, of course, go with Ever After. Definitely. But in terms of the original fairy tale, I gotta give it to the glass slipper. Yeah. I was actually surprised that I enjoyed it so yeah, much. Yeah, I have to agree. And Those there's ballet in it, so yep. hey. So, I mean, in conclusion, we actually had fun watching four different versions of not Disney Cinderella. And... I don't think we really have a what were they thinking because honestly folks you can't go wrong with the classic fairy tale like cinderella i love cinderella i know i do too now we want to give a shout out to a couple people thank you joanne l kim debbie philip camille sue l and donna we appreciate your comments we love the support that you are giving us hey we appreciate those who are subscribing who are watching we're hunkered down at home this is what we want to do for you hey What's our theme next week? So next week, we are going to take the story of Treasure Island. Ooh. So we found Disney's Treasure Island, and we are going to be comparing Muppets Treasure Island. Oh, no. Should be fun. Folks, stay safe. Say well. We love you. See you next week. Watch some movies. Bye.